Right, so, um, we just had a massive recording error for whatever reason. Uh, long story short, this is a, uh, experimental tech talk I want to run through. And I've tried to do this before, but there's two problems. Firstly, it comes off as boastworthy and cluttered. And secondly, it becomes very rapidly outdated. So, yeah, let's just talk about where we are today as a foundation, and seeing how it's Friday, once every week I'll try and update this. So, uh, without further ado, let's get to it. Now, this is a tank I, I mentioned a while ago. It's not by any means bad. Um, and I already mentioned it, so bear with me. But, in essence, it is a pretty high-tech tank, don't get me wrong. But, there's a lot of things wrong with it. Um, put simply, the main gun has a 1-1-2 one, one, setting. It uses a blowback system of two different springs. Problem is, it actually has uh, climbing issues related to the spring versus the hinge while moving. And uh, that's kind of related to mechanical order, come to think of it. And on top of that, the bolts curve inward due to some weird uh, issue with the recoil spring. I'm not entirely sure why. It's probably because they are individual shots. If I didn't do this, it would probably be much more accurate. Probably. Probably. Uh, we also have a laser guarded artillery pack that is absolutely amazing. It just rains down shots on targets uh, at a moderate range, if nothing else. Uh, there is a couple calibration issues with it. And we also have sword based reactive armor that is meant to work with any combination of weapons essentially without completely disabling them. And uh, yeah, the uh, forward plates are nice, the side plates not so much. Um, and the tank isn't particularly fast, come to think of it. Uh, has an afterburner, which is amazing, actually. It's incredibly high power. But the issue is with it, um, it's a semi-automatic afterburner, and it isn't really efficient long-term. Uh, past that, it does have some fun features, like a rearward gun, uh, named the Banshee. has a uh, missile launcher system, although it doesn't aim up and down, which is a huge problem. There's a couple other things that are of note, but in simplicity, it's tanky, it's fast enough, and it has really formidable firepower, and it's in almost all circumstances accurate enough to get the job done. Even some weird concepts I try in like a fine aim mode with a laser protractor that blinks. The problem is with that, um, it's complete crap. So, uh, this is a great tank. It's tanky, it's uh, tactically flexible, and it has even like say a minigun integrated. But there's a lot of lack of elegance and there's a lot of lack in performance that makes it truly flexible and truly formidable in all roles. So we're going to go and step things up a notch, and we're going to go ahead and uh, move over to our next section here. Now, uh, assuming, and I have my deal here, assuming agility is this tank's problem and elegance of operation, <coughs> conversely, largely I would say my next step up, which I built recently as a, based off of Rex type systems, uh, I'll explain this very quickly, uh, there's a lot of Japanese Rex. In fact, it's a Japanese invention. Uh, and there's even a Japanese Rex server, which is what inspired this project. But I wanted to build an American Rex to the same specs and based on the same systems. Um, while still adding a completely all new touch for its design. We're talking different fashion. Talking, uh, actually, the thruster system is completely different in how it throttles and accelerates. Uh, it has an automatic afterburner, various uh, calibration settings for gun aiming. Each gun. Uh, it doesn't use a sword, uh, a shield on a gun, I mean. It uses uh, actually two guns with three modes each, which is pretty handy. It has a uh, built-in flamethrower, a uh, long-range artillery gun, um, quite uh, enviously called the Long Tom, which is, of course, a MechWarrior reference. I doubt anyone will know, but there it is. Um, obviously a new fashion, etc. So, definitely based on the same systems, but totally different design philosophy for the most part. In fact, it's largely incomparable to most Rexes, except for how it moves and its size. That being said, uh, I found the fun concept of the uh, Omni Thruster. And the weird thing is, uh, and I expect this is actually because the Rex I'm studying is a Similicron, uh, something has been modified and replicated so many times it no longer properly resembles the original. And I have a few points to support this theory, but uh, I can't prove it definitively. But my point is, um, we actually have this giant plus of thrusters, and I added even more with um, select indicators for uh, first gear, second gear, afterburner gear, 
uh, which I'll activate in various settings. You can actually tune those down with manual settings. Uh, but these thrusters, while they are underpowered compared to the rest of the apparatus, are absolutely amazing. Uh, however, there's two problems with them. Firstly, if you go backwards and up at the same time, and this may actually have been an original flight system problem, you will fly downward due to the combination uh, of the mechanics. I haven't even changed that. However, I have installed a cheap hack where you can uh, hold X while doing S in space to uh, fly straight. Um, again, so that's really nice. But, uh, yeah, uh, the system's far from elegant, and they're far from the main power, and it's based on a Rex system, which I'm not a huge fan of, because they are absurdly high spec, almost to a fault, if not actually. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to show you the uh, interceptor tank. This is a lot of fun research projects slung together. Whoops, I keep pushing play. Oh, my God. Man, I just don't build anymore, do I? Right. So, anyways, uh, now well, here's the interceptor for everything you need to know. As you can see, it has a massive laser sight going on. This is uh, based on the recent dummy invisibility tech. So these are um, two capsules that are 250 length each strung together. As you can see, there's kind of an in-between seam. Uh, it is toggleable. It has an antenna apparatus based on capsules. So you can uh, indicate a large number of toggles, analogs, etc. And it uses a, uh, I believe, actually a full Omni Thruster design, but only two of them are destructible slash visible. And the uh, other two are invisible for both space reasons and uh, also uh, durability reasons. And, most notably, it has a light chassis allowing for very high speeds, but very specific heavy plates that are layered using uh, pistons with a stop event. Now, there's two problems with this tank, um, primarily. Uh, well, the first problem is it really lacks uh, true diversity in terms of firepower, and some of the mechanics are wonky and fitted weird. Like, we have rubber banding armor related to using uh, straight pistons for the mounting. Uh, we actually have some weird stuff with um, strafing, being able to an arc to it. In fact, that has never been fixed, and I don't even want to fix it. I don't really use strafing. It's kind of optional. Um, and it does have that good old flight system fix I was talking about, so you can go back and up normally, no problems. Uh, the laser sight's, of course, marvelous. It has a more coarse fire cannon, that while um, it does use a blowback spring, it uh, moreover demonstrates the fact that it can aim straight with large volumes of fire, and it uses kind of quantity over immediate quality, although the bullets are also quite high quality as well. Um, they aren't anything to play with, that's for sure. It also has a bayonet in auto thrust mode using the recoil spring, but uh, as you can see, this is a little unstable. Although it is extremely effective in combat, let me just state, it is downright devastating. And for other systems, we have some other weird um, settings and toggles, like uh, extra uh, water float mode, and uh, it even has a radar jammer built in, which I'll get into in just a moment here. Um, but the problem is it really just lacks true diversity, and while the heavy armor plates are nice, uh, in whole damage servers, they are virtually useless, and uh, its main body is not heavy enough to really truly um, uh, reign superior in terms of uh, just overall lifespan. Sorry, I someone just steamed me, so I probably just absolutely messed up that sentence. Um, let's see. Uh, now, uh, no, I forgot what it's called, but yeah, here's the guy. This is the uh, same tank. The heavy variant is the intended variant, but I also have a light variant for under 5,000 weight. This is something I do routinely. Um, and right, so uh, here we can see um, all the marvelousness of what is basically the Thunder Gun and the Interceptor slapped together with a recoloring. And you might be thinking, well, what's the big deal here? Well, let me show you what the big deal is. There is a lot of big deals going on. Um, so we have the exact same radar jammer, except it's actually more effective and less visible. Which is actually an issue, because I decided to make it not one by one by one in size, which is actually point one size blocks. Um, I don't know, I'm still getting message. Jesus Christ, dude doesn't take a hint. Anyways, um, let's see, we also have our, uh, 
laser sight. Now, it's worth noting that I love first-person cameras and I can mount them pretty well in basically any system. I mean, that's not even a question. But of course, the thing is, uh, laser sight means you don't even have to sight in to be able to know exactly where you're aimed. It's, it's just fantastic. Um, Jammer, of course, is good for kind of uh, combining speed and an unseen self. You get the advantage on your enemy. Now, this combines the um, idea of heavy armor plates and uh, reactive sword-based armor plates into one, creating the ultimate um, heavy reactive plates, fusion plates, I'm just going to call them. And you can completely block incoming damage with these, if not entire, well, probably almost entire. I think I recently changed something, or I this judge swords, so you still take slight damage when uh, bullets impact them. Let's get a little uh, robot goon here and show you what I'm talking about. So you can still land hits, that's not necessarily hard to do. But, uh, yeah. That's why I say it reduces a lot of incoming damage. Uh, moreover, these plates are designed to break instead of the uh, main body. And this is kind of a fun bit of a uh, physics I'll clue you in on. Uh, Pierce tank guns have slightly higher AOE than uh, normal cannon shots. So, uh, especially when moving, if bullets or cannons or other high AOE enough projectiles impact this armor and the, uh, uh, the reactive plate doesn't stop it, it can sometimes permeate the heavy plate and uh, cause bodily damage anyways. In fact, we had a good amount of that going on. So, not flawless. Uh, but, you know, it's the point of armor. Realistically, I think, in a fair fight, armor isn't meant to make you invincible. It isn't meant to make you virtually indestructible. It's meant to make you very damage-resistant at best, so you can at least have enough of an edge to really just win over the fight. So, uh, that being said, um, we also have the, uh, as you probably know, the little ear-looking uh, artillery pack. And uh, this is actually a much better calibrated version with a lot more range. I'm going to set this guy to 45 and show you the kind of range we're talking. Not even close to it, though. Uh, I guess that's not too bad. But, uh, yeah, you can absolutely get some crazy range on these guns, especially with a little bit of elevation. Uh, they are really effectively sniper weapons, especially considering you can shoot over many kinds of cover. I uh, do need to use first-person camera to lock it in accurately, but that's hardly a surprise. Yeah, that's still too much range. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Worst case scenario, you can just shoot him directly in the face. This uses a, uh, five piece of three and two artillery guns. Um, we also have a missile launcher integrated into the artillery pack, which will temporarily, whoops, which will temporarily enable the trackers. And this means you can actually lock the elevation, unlike the, with the Thunder Gun tank. I mean, you can pop that guy and hit him almost every single time, regardless if for weird conditions you're doing. Almost. Yeah, so, still not a flawless design, but a heck of a lot better. Now, what I accidentally discovered here is, uh, I forgot to mention, we have mines. Uh, and these actually bump to the ground and self-release. This might actually be not letting them, uh, this is a weaponized projectile, but I'm pretty sure they count as weaponized projectiles. I've seen evidence of what I believe is them being stepped on hurting people. Not noteworthy as they don't charge up a lot, but uh, the idea is really just to leave a large trail of mines behind you so you can mess with your enemy. <laughs> and as you notice, we don't have rubber banding plates. This is super awesome. Uh, long story short, that's because we mounted the pistons perpendicular in sets of twos without increasing the bodies, so it actually keeps the plate locked in even against extreme punishment. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate here very briefly fall on my plate here. Now, yeah, that wasn't nearly enough force. Whatever. Um, but yeah, uh, we do have problems currently with the uh, sides of a turret dismounting its armor. You can F8 that um, just to reset your parts. Or uh, I might fix it later, but it's usually pretty rare and it actually remedies itself uh, pretty quickly on almost all occasions. And uh, well, we do have a sword mode and a cannon mode. Uh, you notice we don't have a recoil spring. This causes way less drift in aim. In fact, we're shooting pretty straight even on the move. Uh, and our sword it doesn't cause instability, and we can just straight up run around and poke people with it, full force. However, in the compensation of this, it's been made significantly longer to have more range like the original. Particularly to reach over the main body of the tank and then a couple blocks extra. And there's one dude getting wrecked. Right. 
Um, and yeah, otherwise, past that, another noteworthy feature of the Interceptor I forgot to mention is it features an automatic afterburner. It'll cycle with Intervolve 12, uh, max 100, max 100, max 100, uh, as long as the event is held. And in fact, combined with the fact that we have Omni thrusters, you can do some amazing maneuvers in this and the Interceptor tank. You know, so I'm just jumping over riverbeds like it's it, it's nothing as far as I'm concerned. You can almost virtually fly in this tank. In fact, you technically can, saying I've added analog controls for that. Um, that's, right. That's probably the wrong terminology, but I've added uh, specific backup controls. I think I mean auxiliary controls, but whatever. Um, but yeah. And by the time we're done here, we have a tank that does about 200 to 240-ish, maybe? Absolute best estimate. Uh, benefit of the doubt there. Uh, and this is the heavy variant. The normal variant moves about as fast as an interceptor, if not actually. And, uh, yeah, we've actually heavily plated the artillery pack to work like heavy armor plates. And, uh, what's wor worth knowing about the heavy armor plates is, uh, while they do suck against cannon weapons, they are highly effective against beamers and swords because those don't really have any sense of AoE. So when they do damage, they hit what they hit. And in the case of the heavy plates, they do very little to no damage. It's ridiculous how incredibly damages in these plates are actually against beamers and swords. It's almost laughable, even in servers where beamers are just as deadly as any other weapon, and someone hits me with a wall of death ray beamer and just takes a chunk out of my plate, best case scenario, but uh, far from vaporizing me like the bird that shoots out of the air. And so by the time we're done here, um, this is a tank I love. It's fast, it has a radar jammer for being a little bit sneaky, it has the raw firepower and flexibility. Oh yeah, right, it also has a built-in mortar mode gun for long-range shooting, which self-calibrates the tracker a little bit just to get a bit of range. And it also has some sort of weird gun. I forget. Oh, wait, it's you. And this is a minigun meant to target other vehicles' suspensions that cripple them, but it's pretty questionable. Oh, right, and of course, we also installed a uh, closed-quarters higher power turning. It's just, this uses thrusters instead of gyroscopes, so it is more energy-consuming. However, you can see the maneuvers we can pull here are just super slick. They're not even really an issue. And yeah, by the time we're done uh, with this tank, it has amazing potential speeds. Built for about 350% energy range, mid-spec I would call that. Uh, so that's worth noting. And uh, yeah, you know, you, you can do great maneuvers, you can hit hard, you can aim accurately on the move. You have tactical artillery and swords for close quarters combat. Well, it's really just a bayonet because someone screws with you. You have uh, armor for taking large volumes of damage and by the time it's all done, I think it's safe to say this is a tank that is worth its weight in salt several times over. It really is built for more part damage servers, but uh, as we quickly find out, whole damage servers are pretty lame. Uh, this story I'll tell you real quick with whole damage servers and me and my friend were confused about this for the longest time. We thought that uh, part damage was a little bit of weird because you just have your core get shot too much and you die. Well, turns out these days in the whole damage servers, uh, whole damage uses your entire core health as your entire absolute health. And getting shot anywhere causes damage to said roughly core health size proportion. So, a whole damage service seems to punish. Uh, having moving parts even more than part damage servers do, and that's insane. So, uh, that's all I have to say about that on the kind of mark of why the hell would you install this? Uh, so, yeah, until next time, WCCC uh, signing out. Hopefully we'll see you next week, though. I want to stay quickly. Uh, hopefully we'll have discovered some fun stuff. I probably want to build some new aircraft by the time it's uh, then, and I want to try with some new flight systems and uh, black box tech I'll talk about later. We might also do a build on aircraft as well, depending on exactly what we end up doing. But uh, thanks for tuning in, and uh, this time for real, WCCC signing out.